so when you start designing the major challenge for us is how you are going to organize your product design product design in the sense how you are going to organize the end modifications modification means now i'm designing it down the line i'm going to do small changes on the features how it's going to affect your design process i guess i have shared you the details today morning have you seen those drawing everyone yes sir. Yeah. yes so you should know how to design that one that is the complexity and how you are going to design is the major challenge right you might have uh, done a small writing i just told you to just take a paper piece of paper and write how you are going to design it did you guys write it yes or no just tell me yes it is frank be frank no problem at least you might have uh, had in the mind that this is how the design is going to happen at least that level how you are going to start first am i audible am i audible yes so audible sir yes sir so that's my objective like you should have made a small notification that i'm going to create a component of this is my drawing which my customer has given and i would like to do the design and this is how i will uh, when i go for an interview they will give such drawings and you need to read such drawings and try to execute those models as per the design aspects okay before we start I'm going to give you some inputs about how you can make a better design. So today I'm going just going to give you some basic fundamental idea of creating a yeah, proper design. So this is just an introduction you just think what I'm giving today is just an introduction you will see so much of difference in this small fundamental of concepts. So I'm going to use something called reference elements. I'm going to use something called reference elements. What are these reference elements? These reference elements are points, lines, right? Planes, right? Planes, and then I'm going to use lines, all this stuff. Points, planes, lines, all sketches, even the two D sketches. What you write it, right? Two D sketches. All these are my reference elements. That means. I'm going to define my points, lines, and sketches in a right direction, and start building my product design. So that down the line, if at all I would like to do some small modification of the components, I can use these points, lines, and planes and sketches to modify my product design. I'm going to use my modify my product design, right? And once I modify my product design based on my product modification of this product design. I'm going to create a new product definition. That means the best practice. I'm going to teach you one of the best practice of creating, yeah, modeling capabilities, right? Modeling capabilities. So what is this? One of the best practice of modeling capabilities. I'm going to use reference elements. See, you might have observed that when you start creating. Your part body, right? This is your specification tree. You know that what is specification tree. You will have X, Y, Z plane. You will have pad, right? You will have pocket, right? You will have, say for example, edge fillet. All these features, right? So if I create a point, it goes one more. Point one. If I create point two, I'll create point two. So what happens? A big list of chain of points lines will go and part body is so complex that i cannot able to manage all these things there so to put my set in my design aspects in the best way i'm going to create some geometrical set i'm going to create geometrical set right i'm going to create geometrical set you understand that this geometrical set is so important in product design right i'm going to use this geometrical set for organizing my design prospects or design processes in a structured way where i'm going to add my reference elements right reference elements 
in a structural way right very important in this case is that reference elements means what points lines planes and sketches that's it so one very important point you need to understand geometrical set will take only reference elements right so what i'm going to do i'm going to create in my part body a specification tree a small geometrical set see that the geometrical set gs and i'm going to put all my reference in a folder so geometrical set is more like a file or a folder right which is going to hold only my reference element make a note only my reference element geometrical set never never ever accepts never ever accepts pad pocket edge delete all the stuff it accepts only point that's a point or it lines or planes only it accepts so are you guys clear geometrical set you make a note that geometrical set will accept only the reference element that two wireframe and surface reference element wireframe reference elements and surface reference elements so anything of that one so you make a note that uh, geometrical set anybody ask you what is geometrical set see i have so many points i will be using so many lines i will be using so many uh, planes i will organize all these points lines and planes in a structured way so that when i start creating my product development this makes me very clear that this reference elements are the key components for my design aspects and based on this design aspects i'm going to move on further in terms of creating the product design so tomorrow probably rahul is doing some changes or satya is going to do some changes or navin is going to do some changes or aditya is going to do some changes anybody will come and find out hey rahul has done this changes no need to worry go to geometrical set there is a point number 1 and point number 2 which i can do some small changes i can develop a new product development so that is the intent of this aspect so to make it very clear number 1 geometrical set it's a file or a folder which accepts wireframe reference elements and it takes only reference elements very important it never accepts pad or pocket or edge fillet which is a part design feature see this is a part design feature part design feature understood so the morning i shared you one of the drawing and told you just to understand how you are going to design it by end of the session you will see how the best practice is so important in design aspects and how this best practice will play a critical role in the design aspect so that's the point which you need to understand before getting into that okay let me open that component so that you are very clear about that so just a minute i'm just opening that one So what you understand from that is, are you guys clear? Are you guys clear with this concept? What is geometrical set? Clear? Yes. Sir. Yeah. Perfect. So yes. anybody ask you what is geometrical uh, set? Please. Yeah. If you have doubt, please ask. Me. Now I will just show you how to create this component. Just a minute. I'm just uh, checking my. now i'm going to show that component and let's go and proceed further on the development side okay thank you i'm going to create my first point which is at a distance of 76 from the coordinate system right i just created my point then i'm going to create my coordinate system one point which is 000, 000. so this is my second point so i'm just building my Design for this component. So 
just go there i'm going to create some point and give the color uh, representation for you this is my second point so i'm just drawing or defining points lines planes that's one number two i'm going to use my point and line between this i'm going to select this point see this point and this point i'm going to just use line so i'm going to use line pointer you know how to create it i'm going to create point to point between this point which we have created just now just give okay you get this point so you can give one more color for this one say for example yellow with some dimension so this is the second point which you have created now as for the drawing as for the drawing you see this as for the drawing what is that i need to have one more point which is at a distance of from here to here at a distance you see that this distance can you see 27 mm this is 27 mm from this point so that it is 27 so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to create a point on this curve on this curve which one on this curve point i'm going to use the same point on this curve taking a reference of this one taking the reference as point 2 that means from that point 2 the distance i'm going to create a line curve on that that is nothing but line a curve a point which is at a distance of 27 mm see that i'm going to create a point which is at a distance of 27 mm just give okay you have created a point at exactly see this point exactly at 27 mm so that i can just give one color for this one right this point i'm going to give one color right this point also down now if you observe the drawing you can see that i'm creating a plane see that we have a plane over here right this plane this plane this, see this, this plane which is at a distance of see this i'm going to create a plane i'm going to create a plane at an angle of 24 degrees see this angle of 24 degrees that's very important right so i'm going to create a plane at an angle of 24 degrees you need to be very careful on that okay. so that means for the creation of plane i need to have an axis right so i just carefully you watch it what i'm going to do i'm going to create <laughs> i'm sorry i'm going to create a point and direction see that i'm going to create my point and direction and select this as my point direction is z axis we will create on z axis a 20 mm right so this have done it right so this is my point and this is my axis so now i'm going to create a plane which is at an angle of which is at an angle of 24 degrees see that this 24 degree i'm going to create a plane right so in this case i'm going to go for a plane and i'm going to use plane angle normal because it has to rotate right my rotation axis you can ask me why i created this axis so this is my axis rotation axis and this is my plane which i want to rotate at that particular point at an angle of 24 degrees see that beautifully i just created my point plane see i just created a plane at that particular point which is at a distance of 20, 27 mm and i've created a line which i rotated at an angle of 24 degrees right just see that see that i just created a point and a plane over that so this plane let us give some color for your identification let me give some green and understand that this is my point see that right and we know that i'm going to create n number of planes now once again i'm going to create a plane parallel to from this particular plane which plane from zx plane which is at a distance of 8 mm right this 8 mm which is that 8 mm 
go back this 8 mm is this one this is 8 mm and i'm going to create one more plane which is at a distance of 65 from this plane so from here i created one plane over here like this and i'm going to create one more plane like this that's amazing right so one plane i've just created which is 8 mm from zx plane see that okay and i'm going to create one more plane i'm going to create one more plane in reverse direction at a distance of at a distance of 65 mm just give okay you get this one see that perfect 65 mm so these two points this plane one and plane two i'll just give some color for you right i'll just give yellow and increase the thickness right so i'm just building my base i never started my modeling see still i never started my modeling i'm just creating my base feature the reference element i'm going to use this reference element and start building my complex so what i'm going to do in this case i'm going to use the same sketch see the first level of your requirement is this dimension so first what i'm going to do is that i'm going to use this dimension so this i'm going to use this outer dimension so that is what i'm planning to do with now this and this one i'm going to do this one right so for that you know 65 76 and you know this 60 this 60 is very critical for me right this 60 is critical and this 24 is very critical and this 5 is also critical for me this 5 is also critical so 65 76 and this this five dimensions are very critical for me too do this one so what i'm going to do observe carefully now i'm going to click my position in sketch and i'm going to select my xy plane see this this is my vertical right this is my vertical and this is my horizontal but i don't want that one i would like to swap i'm swapping my see this i'm going to swap observe here observe here i'm going to swap i'm going to swap that this is vertical this is horizontal and i'm going to reverse my horizontal and just give okay you can see that how my drawing is also there right how my drawing you can see that the same way you can see this one also. this is 27 this is 76 this is 65 and this is 80 right so now what i'm going to do in this case right i'm going to use this definition and start creating the model so just use this one see i'm going to write and just draw that See that i'm going to just use it and just use this one right just i've done a rough outer body of the sketch which is not really constrained still the first job always remember that take the geometrical constraint day one itself i was talking right give geometrical constraint so give tangency over there perfect you get your tendency done then what is that i will ensure that this line right this line and this plane are coincidence right this line and this plane are coincidence this will be okay to get it done that is done so i'm constraining the sketch similarly this plane and this one this axis right this plane and this dimension i'm going to give coincident constraint so that that sketch is also coming green right that's also done then i'm going to give this dimension alone this is 5 mm right sorry 5 mm and from here from here to here this 60 mm, 60 mm right so that is also done now you observe this particular point and this point is same right i'm going to use concentricity so coincident that one also this is also done but now still the sketch is not fully constrained see that the sketch is not fully constrained because of the reason just see here in my drawing that this sketch right this particular line this line this line is we have created one plane over right here it's exactly 90 degree right perpendicular so what i'm going to do 
I'm going to select this line and select this plane and ensure that it is perfect. So that your constraint is done. Your sketch is fully constrained. See, I never gave what dimension? I never gave 76, I never gave 65, I never gave 8, I never gave this dimension also. I just give 60 and 5. And all the sketches I constrain with my planes and lines and that's it. So just exit this one. So your plane is ready, your sketch is ready. Now, first step is this sketch, I'll give one color, the green. And this sketch, I'm going to create a pad. Yeah, which we know that pad will never come in geometrical set. You go there and I'm going to create for a thickness of how much for a thickness of 4 mm so I'm going to create it for a thickness of 4 mm so just give 4 mm right so now you will think why Bernard has created this wireframe and reference and so much of confusion right for me so what I'll do I'll just hide see that I just hidden that one so if I'm not created this geometrical set you see that how big the specification tree will be there right now this geometrical set is just like a folder where I can create some reference elements and points, planes, everything, lines to organize myself on the product design and down the line if you do some changes, right? If you do some changes on the design aspects, you're going to create the entire design aspect as a changes. So that's my point which you need to understand, right? Now let's go to the next level, right? We have just gone this one. Next is I'm going to create a 26 and a radius of 28. I'm going to give the fillet inside. So I'm going to draw, I'm going to select. Are you guys with me? Any doubts so far, please? Not no, sir. Right. So I'm going to create this particular plane. See that? I'm going to click on my sketch and click OK. And I'm going to just draw a rectangle. See, I'm just going to draw your rectangle. Simple like that. Right, and I'm going to create this sketch to be constrained with this one. See, coincident constraint. I just did it, and see this. I'm going to give. I'm teaching you a shortcut. Select this line and this plane, and right click, give coincident. That is also done. So I am just using this planes, right, which I have done already. Select this one and this one. Right click, coincident to get that one also, and give this dimension as 26. Right, exit this workbench, and you can see that the sketch is also, also done. Create a path in this reverse direction and give OK. And this path now is for 3mm. As for the drawing, you can just see the drawing is 3mm. And I'm going to give fillet to the corner, so I'm going to use edge fillet so that I'm going to select this one and this one. For a dimension of 8 mm so that you get that one also in your design aspect see that how beautifully we are use this plane All right now the remaining i think uh, two minutes is there i'll just continue and use the same link and join immediately don't uh, delay it join immediately so that we can continue okay after two minutes it will go off don't delay it join immediately after two minutes Okay, I'll just continue. If it goes in the middle, just join immediately. Got it? Yes, sir. Perfect. All right. So now, what I'm going to do is that so my next objective, you just see that my next objective. Sorry. My next objective is I need to create this wedges, right? I want to create this ribs. I would like to create this one. That is at an angle. See that? That is at an angle of 24 degree and this is my sketch very important very important what is this axis this axis See this axis is nothing but this hole right this hole and this hole all the yellow lines whichever I draw or yellow dot is the same one so this is also the same that means there is a axis that axis is nothing but this hole but if you see this axis which is at a distance of how much 20 mm see it is 20 mm from the base from the bottom 
and from that 27 mm right this is my 27 from here the distance is 35 mm just observe here this from here to here it is 35 from bottom it is 27 that means the whole axis position i'm going to draw the whole axis position so what i'm going to do now is that less than a minute i just hold on now understand what i'm going to do with i'm going to just create an axis system and a plane system on that plane my axis is going to come over here and which is at a distance of 20 mm and 35 mm okay as we understand my next objective is to create this particular flanges which you can see ribs which is exactly at 27 mm you can see over here and which is at an angle of 24 mm and I'm going to create a plane which is at an angle no need to create a plane right so you guys can able to see me right right thank you so I'm going to create a sketch which is 35 20 at an angle of 45 degrees so that's the objective which I'm going to create now when I do this one just understand here that I'm going to create my reference element i'm going to create my reference element so similarly this is my reference on this plane i'm going to create the first objective for me is that i'm going to create this point i would like to have this point right this point i would like to create this point which is nothing but 20 mm 35 so that's my objective so what i'll do i'm going to create a point see this very carefully on this plane that i'm just going to create a point the plane which is at a distance of minus 35 which i'm writing here typing over here see that and 20 mm from the base see that so this is my point right which i'm going to put it cancel it see that i'm going to put it define in work object and i'm going to create this plane point which is 20 mm this is see that minus 35 mm and this is 20 mm see that this is 20 mm but default 20 mm from where not from origin right not from origin from this particular point very carefully just observe it from this particular point so that my point 3 is taken reference otherwise what happens very carefully just observe this one minus 35 and minus 20 20 mm i just taken that means from here 20 and 35 are taken not with the reference to global point Rather, rather than that, I'm going to select this point. Just give OK. Now this point is ready for your next level of actions. So this is my point, which I'm going to use it for my next level of actions. See, this is my point. Okay. Now you know that I'm going to design this one. So I would the thickness of this is say for example 4 mm. The width is 4 mm. So I'm going to design the distance is 6 mm. So See that very carefully I'm going to do it I'm going to you create some planes I'm going to create some planes which is at the distance of 6 mm one and I'm going to create one more plane which is at the distance of 4 mm see this right this and this one and I'm going to keep a new color right and some thickness right this is my 4 mm right Similarly, I'm going to create one more plane in reverse direction, reverse direction, an offset plane, which is at a distance of 6 mm, right? And I'm going to create one more plane here, which is reverse it, with reference to that plane, which is at a distance of 4 mm. Just give OK. And this plane and this plane, so that we have created this plane and this plane for your identification as be some color. You can also do the same thing, right? So just to for identification. Now, on the green plane, see on the green plane, I'm going to do position in sketch. Observe here. I'm going to do position in sketch. This position in sketch where exactly that plane, the green plane, that is nothing but the plane one. And my projection point is the point which we did, right? 27 point, the first point from here, 27. I'm going to select that one as my projection point. So that my axis will come exactly there and give OK. Now your axis also will come exactly at that point. See that, right? See that, you can see that. 
So put it normal, you can see that. Now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to just use my sketch. See that, I'm going to just draw my sketch. See that. And I'm going to just join over here. So first step always, remember, coincident constraint, tangency, jump to constraint. Then this line and this edge, I'm going to give it constraint. See, that's it. So this angle, you know, and this point, see, see this point, this point is there, right? This point, this point, what I've selected over here, this point, I'm going to make it coincident with this axis, that's it. So for me, no challenges, make it coincident, sorry. Select this point and this point and select it coincident so that it goes there, right? And see this, this is my angle or whatever it is. So this is my dimension, which I have to give this dimension as 6 mm, right? 6 mm and this radius, if at all you would like to give, you can give or 12. So I'm going to select over here and this dimension is 6 mm. 6 mm and this dimension I'm going to give as R12. Radius 12. See that? I just created that sketch on that particular plane. Taking the coordinate axis as to this system and give OK. Right? So now my sketch is ready. The sketch is also ready. See this? The sketch is also ready. If this reference element is not there, you just imagine how difficulty for me this could be, right? That's the use of this plane, points, line, axis. How I did it, right? So I just exactly did on that particular point. Now, I'll give color different because so many greens are there. I'll give the same color of something. I'm going to use pad. You know how to create a pad. Default, it goes there because pad is a uh, this geometrical set. I'm going to create a pad. Create a pad. And I'm going to select this sketch. Right? And I'm going to tell planes. And I'm going to use up to this plane. Right? One. Select my limits. You know one more plane i'm going to select two planes see this this plane and this plane same sketch i'm going to limit with not with the dimensions with the limit to planes i'll repeat it i just drawn these two planes right and i'm going to use this sketch which i have drawn on this green plane which is the green sketch go and select my pad right and i'm going to select this sketch which i'm going to pad it will come like that as per the dimensions, I'm not going to use dimension. I'm going to limit the plane. First, I'm going to select this plane so that from there the plane is going to happen. Select more, and you can see over here also your plane. And give OK. You get that particular point also done at this location. Okay. Right? So that is also done. Now Similar, I'll just go to that same sketch, show that sketch, see that, same sketch is available and I'm going to use the same sketch pad and I'm going to use the same sketch, anyhow I have my reference planes and I'm going to select my plane until this particular plane so that you can change the orientation, no problem and I'm going to select other plane also which is nothing but this plane. So I used the same sketch for my both the planes at the same location see that okay clear guys am i clear yes sir yeah anyone anyway, recording it you can just practice it down the line okay so i just created this one so once this is done the major activity we have done only the fillet see this fillet is 6 mm over here fillet is so let me go and give the fillets. So now I'll go to my fillets and select this fillet. This is my one fillet. This is one more fillet. Be careful while selecting the fillets. Select this one and select 6 mm. Right? And then select all my edge fillets. So I'm going to select my edge fillets. 
over here one this is my second this is my third and I'm going to select see all should be not face see you have to remove it. be careful while selecting this only the not remove it only the like this and give to it see that we are just given that box right that I need to put a hold right so no worries just go and click on the sketch go there click on this plane you know what is the dimension you are supposed to give for that hole the hole diameter is 6 mm right you know go there position the sketch already we have a pink point right this pink point take this point and take this point make it coincident so that automatically your hole will go to that same location and exit it and now your position sketch you have the hole for a dimension of 6 mm until plane which plane you can select here also until this plane so that done. your hole is also done at the critical point right so hole diameter is how much 6 mm right this is my hole which are done there so this is hole. 6 mm diameter right so that is also done next I would like to create a hole over here what is the dimension for the hole see that here also 6 mm so I'm going to create my hole at this particular point position in sketch so you know that this point and this point sorry this point and this point I would make it coincident and exit this and I'm going to give until last just give okay you get that point also. Yeah. so next I'm going to create a point over here right so same hole select over here position and sketch so that's the point so select this point and this particular point and give coincidence and exit it and give next 6 and done that is also done see that and one more hole is there i guess one more hole which is the distance of 52 so what you can do there you can create one more point over there see that i'm going to put the final work object and i'm going to create a point on this curve itself right set the distance of from the point this one is at a distance of reverse 60 at a distance of 52 just give okay. that point also you get it and this point right this point I'm going to use it for my definition so this is also my point so same hole I'm going to create on this one and go position and sketch and select this hole and select this point and this point make it coincident constraint that's also done and exit this and now that is also done for this damage right see everything we are done now this wireframe is so confusion for me right what I'll do just go and hide this one so that's my product design so now we have just completed my product design as per the dimension right as per the dimension without any any changes see i will give now materials property you know how to give material property go there for example it's a, a metal of a tungsten or something like nickel just drag and drop on it so you get your material tungsten also apply it just give it now you have given your component material property of tungsten whatever it is as for the dimension so this is the bracket which I'm going to use for my aerospace component component where it's going to hold my stringers and the components in line with this riveting pole but see the changes right we are in the world of engineering change every day the customer asks it the demand changes right can I use the same bracket and do a different angle or different hole position possible so what I'll do now I know my wireframes of my solid strength so what I do this is my 27 degree right 
which I made the plane. So you know that 24 degree which I made the plane. So what I do now, just see the interesting thing. I'm going to change my angle to my 29, 30 degree. See that your component also get changed to 30 degree. See that, right? See that. that that's the beauty which you need to understand. This particular plane. I'm going to change it to now rotation axis for 30 degrees. So some customers come in telling, can you put it to 22 degree? Yeah, I'm can, I can put that one to 22 degree. That's also possible. Some customer is coming and telling, hey, I don't want this distance to be eight. I would like to reduce to four mm. Is it possible four mm? Yeah, that is also possible four mm. Possible. So I'm just playing with my plates and somebody is telling eight mm, just going back. Sorry. Eight mm back. back. Okay. Somebody is telling I do. I would like to change this point position to eight mm rather than seventy six. So what do you do? Go and change only the point. See that your design is got changed, right? Somebody is telling I would like this distance rather than sixty five. I would like to have it to seventy mm. <coughs> See that you you got the seventy mm. So, my you, you understand now the power of wireframe. See the power of wireframe. How I'm managing my design without touching the features. I'm just playing with this angle. Somebody is telling the thickness is too heavy. I would like to reduce the thickness to two mm. Possible? I just make it to two mm. So this is also possible. I control this plane also to two mm. So see that this also two mm. Possible? I can reduce it. So this is the real industry challenge which you will be working and this is how the design of what I'm going to do for advanced courses nearly about 52 hours of uh, training which I'm going to do it on advanced courses where you'll be learning such critical exercises and where you will play a critical role as a design engineer. I'm just giving you a path as a design engineer and where you can assume that for five hours or eight hours of training you have learned this much and remaining 52 hours is plenty of learning. So every day a new new excitement and you're going to learn new new things for the next uh, two months of the period of time. So that's my engagement model with you people in terms of advanced courses. But understand this is how your design engineering is so important in aspect of the design. Any doubts so far please? So what we understood in this is we have understood how to use my reference elements and how to create my points, lines and planes and all the stuff in the right direction and use it for my product definition so that down the line I'm going to design only one bracket but using one bracket I can get a number of configurations by changing the planes, changing the points position, changing the coordinate system, changing the angle position so that I can customize my bracket for different loading conditions of its intent. Right, so that is the importance which you know to know about this one. So that means this reference element is going to play 